You're listening to The Practical Wealth Show with Curtis May, putting you in the driver's seat to control your finances. Let's start the Practical Wealth Talk about alternatives to Wall Street. Today, what we're going to talk about is, uh, I think I titled the show, uh, Should I uh, Be Involved In or Should I Do Network Marketing? Uh, my short answer is yes. Um, and I'll tell you what would uh, drive this call. So I want to shout out to Linda in California. She had uh, called me and asked me to uh, talk about this. And so she was in something and she didn't realize I I was a uh, like an executive director in the company that she's currently in. Uh, probably about 10 years ago. So I have actually a really strong background in network marketing and I'm a big uh, proponent of the industry. So yes, I think the short answer is yes, you should. But, you know, and it is actually one of my favorite business models. So hopefully I'll, 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 I'll tell you why. So why is it one of my favorite business models? One, I grew up in regular business. So I'm a third generation entrepreneur. So my, my, Grandfather was in business in the 50s as a black man and uh, uh, employed 25 or 30 people. My dad owned a supermarket and was in the tavern business. And so we had regular brick and mortar businesses. A lot of times I would do uh, briefings in the last or opportunity meetings, they would call them in the last company I was in. And it was like $249 to start. And they're like, oh, you, you want me to pay money to start? I said, yes. Uh yeah, I do because it costs money to be in business. Where the hell can you start a business for two hundred and fifty dollars or five hundred dollars? I mean, at the time, it cost five grand to get a hot dog cart. Okay, so y'all have to put these things in perspective. So one of the one of the so let me keep going with that story before I go down that that road. Okay, because every time I say it, it annoys me. <laughs> all right, and so I said, well, all right, yeah. So let me put this in perspective. My dad, we he was getting a second tavern, so he asked me if I want to be involved in it. So I said, sure. I was about 27 at the time. So I knew that the liquor license, the license to be able to do business in Philadelphia at the time, and it triple that now, was $30,000. We had to buy a building. This was actually relatively inexpensive compared to what it would cost today, but the building was 30, 35. Then we had to renovate it. And then we had to stock it. I remember he took five grand to order some stock, you know, the beer and the liquor and, and that didn't even fill the shelves up, you know, and, and the shelves are empty. So we put another four or five grand in it and that was just to stock it. Then we had to hire and, and staff it with bartenders and, uh, and then hope people would come in, you know? And so we had overhead, we had a note, we had electric, we had cable, cable, we had gas, we had, um, um, you know, to pay to different people for the ice machines and leases for all that kind of stuff. And, you know, so all of a sudden we're in the hole, 75 or 100 grand, the day the door is open with no guarantee we're going to make any money. That, folks, is business in America. OK. And so a lot of times when people are looking at they want to make money, but they don't really, you know, when they're comparing these things, you know, I, uh, I heard this from Todd Langford. Um, it was a great software uh, called our Truth Concepts that we use to prove the truth in, on, the, on the financial side of what we do. But one of his sayings I heard from is compared to what, right? And so you have to um, compare it to something. And so when you look at that, no staff, no employees, generally no inventory. Uh, yes, it's a great business model. Now, you don't know how to be in business. See, most people, what the... the um, what I think a network marketing business allows you to do is you got to learn how to be in business. You got to learn how to think like an employee. You got to learn how to go from being a work processor, right? Where you're used to going to work. Somebody tells you what to do and you get a check on Friday. You've now got to learn how to be a work creator where you basically have to learn how to market. You got to learn how to sell. You've got to learn how to, um, Basically, make stuff happen, okay? And and uh, that's the world I live in. I live in the in the in the entrepreneurship world where there is no net and I and, and there's no paycheck unless I make one happen. But guess what? You don't have to jump out of a perfect airplane without a parachute. You get to do that part time. Jim Rohn is a great video if you look on YouTube called 
uh, building your network marketing business. And one of the things that he talks about is profits are better than wages, right? Wages make you a living. Profits make you a fortune. But he says to work on your fortune at night and on the weekends, right? And and you make your living by day from your job, okay? And so if you get to the point where your profits equal or surpass your your job, then, hey, that's, that's when you can consider quitting. See, there's a lot of people, you know, they hear, you know, the, the Starship commander comes in town, you know, on a weekend, they're all, everybody's all hyped. <laughs> and uh, they're making 20, 30 grand a month. And they're like, oh, wow, you know, you just need three people who get three who get three. And, uh, you know, if you just come to a meeting and bring your friends, you know, you're going to be a millionaire in three months. You know, now they don't say that. Right. But that's what people hear. And and um, and you don't know how to evaluate a business. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons of that. So I think, first of all, business is business, okay? And so multi-level marketing or network marketing, you know, when you look at business, you've got the product, you got the, I'm sorry, you got the manufacturer and you have the consumer, right? So how do you get the product from your manufacturer to the consumer is part of the marketing process, right? And so what happens is you're building your distributorship so the company has products and or services that they're selling and so instead of you know brand advertising and 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 uh you know doing super bowl ads and that kind of stuff it says you know what we're going to pay a network of independent distributors independent business people that are going to market our stuff on their own dime with their own activity and we're going to incent them through uh allowing them to a market the products and build their own network of distribution of those products that they get to make money from commissions. Commissions is when you personally sell your stuff and overrides. Overrides are making money off of other people. And people say, oh, that's a pyramid. That is not a pyramid. Okay. And so a lot of times you, you got to get this stuff out of your head. So let me use a simple example. And a lot of times I used to draw this. So I said, well, listen, you don't, you don't want to be one of them pyramid things. Okay. And so I used to use this. I said, well, have you ever, are you familiar? And so what you do, if you're in this and you're listening to that, draw comparisons to what people always already understand. So you say, well, all right, are you familiar with Remax, or you were, are you familiar with Century Twenty One, or Long and Foster, or or with Keller Williams, wherever something they are familiar with, and I'll say, say yes. Yeah. So I'll draw a box, and I say, okay, well, in the real estate business, and let's just say Century Twenty One uh, or Remax, and I'll put that in the box. I says, so there's two positions in that business. I'm going to simplify. So if you're a real estate listed, this, I understand there's sides and there's two offices. I understand that. I just trying to keep it simple, right? So what happens is if you're as two positions in real estate, you've got the broker and you got the agent, right? So I'll draw a box. I put, so let's say you're the broker, right? I put, always put them on top and you're, uh, you sell a hundred thousand dollar house. So let's say the commission is 6%, that's $6,000. So I'll write $6,000 next to the broker box. Let's say you list it and sold it and you didn't have to, to split it or split it with another office. So you got both sides, they call it. And so now, that's six thousand dollars. So that's me making a commission. So now let's say I wanted to expand. Let's say I sold you a house or you sold me a house and I was very curious and I wanted to know, well, how's this work, man? This seems exciting. You, you sold this. I, I like your, your lifestyle seemed to be fascinating. And um, I would love to get into real estate. And uh, I had this realtor uh, who's one of an early mentor of mine. She would say she would recruit all the time. She'd go, hey, have you ever considered exciting career in uh Real estate, right? Was her was her opening phrase, and so you know, so she just say you said that to me, and then you said, well, I said no. Well, tell me about it. Well, you can set your own hours. You can do this. Here's the market. This is you know what you could make uh, part time and transition to full time. Oh, that sounds great. What do you have to do? Well, you got to make a list of uh, people that you know. You got to create you know of your sphere of influence so you can share with them what you're doing. So you're going to do that. I'm going to help you. I'm going to spend my time. So you got to have a sphere of influence of people that, you know, otherwise no reason for us to talk to go into business. I'm going to show you how to do that. Lo and behold, you're going to list and sell your first house, your commission 
will, let's say, be 3%, right? Or that's your commission, right? So that's 3%. You do $100,000 a house, you're going to make $3,000. So now that's your commission, but there's 6000 that's going to be paid out in their transaction. Well, who gets that? That's right. The broker, right? And so that is called an override. That is a management override. And see, folks, all businesses work that way, right? Business is business. Multi-level is a commission structure. So that's how um, broker dealers work. If you're in, in, in the mutual world, that's how insurance agencies work. That is how car dealerships work. You've got the sales manager. Sales manager gets a piece of all of the sales from the sales reps on the floor. They sell. He gets an override and his job is to train them and help them become successful. So if he has a floor of people making $100,000 a year because he's coached them up to do that, he's making a lot of money and getting rewarded for that as he should. Right. And so as the coach and so the same, hair salons, uh, depending on how they work, you might either get you rent a chair, which I don't think you're supposed to do. But, you know, they might be doing a 60 40 split at a hair salon where they or the 70 30 split, whatever, where the stylist makes 60 or 70 percent. And then they pay 30 percent that comes through to the owner. Why? Because you're using their salon, your electricity, those amenities, the products. And so it's a win win. So if you want to make more money. So you're the salon owner, you could work harder, but it's only 168 hours in a day, week, sorry. And so, or you could hire more people. So I ask people, and going back to real estate example, if you're going to be in that business, would you rather be the broker or the agent? Oh, I said a broker. Okay. And if you're going to be a broker, how many agents would you like on your team? Oh, wow. As many as I can get. All right. Well, guess what? Now, you want to override off of other people, right? See, your job already works that way. When you go to work, they're, you know, if they pay you uh, $20 an hour, you better believe you're producing $30, $40, $50 an hour worth of output, okay? Otherwise, there's no reason to hire you. And guess what? There's nothing wrong with that either, okay? That, was a, that might be another episode where I'm having these talks with, oh, it's not fair. It ain't fair. I just had this conversation with my daughter on the way of her getting her first job. So we're excited about that. And um, although you work to learn, don't work for money. So I reminded both my kids, what's the first lesson of rich dad? Poor dad, rich people don't work for money, right? So I don't want you to get used to a paycheck, but I want you to learn how to interview, how to get a job, and um, they'll work better, work for some other people. They realize how great their parents are <laughs> to work for. Anyway, and we're back. Right. And so what happens is the pros are you get to learn how to be in business. You get to learn how to lead. You get to learn how to sell. You get to learn how to train other people. Those are the benefits of network marketing because it allows you to educate yourself on entrepreneurship for you know, anywhere from 50 to, you know, twelve, thirteen hundred dollars, which in the course of being in business, when you look at that like that, compared to getting 150 grand or a or, or million dollars for a McDonald's, they're all business models, okay? And so you have to look at it. So some of the benefits are the personal development on, on somebody else's dime to learn how to do that. You know, what are your skills? See, and I'm a product of this because I started at age 20 in Amway, right? And I, I read How to Win Friends, Influence People, The Magic of Thinking Big. And I went on a 10 year, I probably still do it, you know, of personal development. I was not outgoing. I was an introverted. I was confident, but I was introverted, right? So now people, I tell them that they don't believe me. My natural state is invert, introvert, but I can be extrovert on demand. And so, but that is a product of personal development, you know, Tony Robbins and Tom Hopkins and you know, all of these people, I'm a product of all of that stuff. I, I still easily read two to four books a month, you know, podcasts a day, audio, one or two audio books a month. So, you know, you're always growing. And so what happens is if you believe, which we've said before on the show, your number one investment is you, right? In your mindset, your skill set and your network. See, people want to do a network marketing business. We don't know anybody, right? Well, that's tough. Okay. Cause you not friendly and you don't know a lot of people, you're going to fail, okay? <laughs> so I hate to tell you to, so you better make some friends. And um, But here now, here's some of the challenges I have with it because network marketing is a business of marketing and promotion, but they don't teach you how to market or promote. And so most people who get into the business, they're just hoping 
uh, to it's like it, it's like the lottery. You know, I used to challenge people when I would do trains. I say, listen, you know, what is what is your expectation from the business? Do you believe that this will work? I say, if you got out of it, what you not what you want, but what you expected, what would you have? And so they're hoping, you know, when I once I understood the numbers aspect of the business, I knew it worked. See, it wasn't a question. Did did the business work? It's will you work? OK. And so most of you, you'll jump from company to company, to company looking for the better thing. And you need to go to work. If I say, well, look, I did that thing. It didn't work. Really? If I'm coaching somebody and they say that to me, I want to know. All right. Let me see. Let me see your. Your list, your database. And how are you building your, your, your database and your list? And let me see your appointment book. You know, how many people did you share the your product or service with or your opportunity with. And when I look at that, I was like, "Uh uh-huh, you didn't work, okay? And so that's why it didn't work because you didn't work. Now maybe you didn't know how, but I, you didn't work. And so I don't wanna hear the company ain't this, the company is not that, it's not the company, it's you, okay? And so you have to, so I hate to tell you some of you that, it's you, okay? And so one of the things you have to evaluate the business. So they don't teach you. So you just hear this thing, you get all excited. You know, if I were, I have a couple of things I still do, but you know, I basically try to run people off because I just, I don't have a patience. So if you're looking for a pie in the sky and you're like, oh, I just, it's just so exciting, you know, where can I start? I would say, listen, why don't we do it in the morning? Because if it was good tonight, it'll be good in the morning. So I don't need you to do it <laughs> because you're excited because you're going to be unexcited tomorrow. So let's, you know, let's go over it. I want to see why you want to do it. And I make them tell me why they want to do it because I just, I don't need you. See, and uh, I run my my agency that way. I don't need you. I'm going to make money whether I ever see you again because I know how to make it rain in my business in terms of marketing. And so what are you bringing to the table? Uh, I've got insurance agents start to call me. What are you bringing to the table to that will, you know, um, why should I allow you in my universe, so to speak? Okay. And so you got to have that, that is not, so it's not your attitude can't be who can I get in? It's got to be who am I going to let in? Who, who's am I going to let them into the, my circle so that my leadership can change your life? That is the attitude. And so if you're new, guess what? You've got to find somebody that can do that. You know, why should they? join you. So in marketing, one of the first things you got to have is your unique selling proposition. Well, why should they join you? If there's five of y'all from the, you're all in XYZ company and there's five, 10 or five or 10 of you lined up on the wall, why should they work with you versus any other uh, leader that that could sponsor them? What are you bringing to the table? Do you know how to help them build your list? Do you know how to market? Do you know how to do? And if you don't, see, People Follows, uh, there's a great book out there by, and I recommend this to somebody that, you know, connected me randomly and then on LinkedIn and then wants to, um, hey, I got this great thing. Don't do that, folks. That Don't do that to me anyway. That annoys the hell out of me. You know, just uh, where you're connecting, same thing with wholesalers. Okay. I can't stand that, you know, and then you, they connect with you. I don't see any reason for it. And then they want to hit you up. Hey, come, come, come buy my crap. <laughs> okay. And, uh, so you have to, or here's my another pet peeve while we're on it. I've had, and it was a young guy that, that I, that, uh, we worked together and I mentored and he got in this thing. It's like, well, listen, do me a favor. I want you, it was like a rebate thing. It's like, buy this. Can you do me a favor and support my business? Um, so if you start out with do me a favor, you are already starting out from a state of weak. Now, I know people train on this, so I'm going to step on some toes. I am the contrarian after all, you know, they train on weakness. Do me a favor. I that you're not doing me a favor. I if your product doesn't create value for them, then you don't have a you, you know, you you don't have a good product. OK, you don't have a good service. You don't have a good opportunity. So you want them to take a look at what you're doing. But I don't do me a favor and buy my stuff, you know, based upon relationship. Don't approach people like that. You need to approach people from a, a air of prosperity, of the fact that you can bring value to their life. So these are just some some things, some some of the mindset things that you when you're positioning yourself uh, with that. Right. 
And so <laughs> I'm trying to look at my little outline here. I'm all over the place. But so I, I do like network marketing. I don't like, see, most people don't have, I heard this from Jeff Olson when I, I used to be in a, a prepaid legal, it's called Legal Shield now. And I've met him personally. He said, most people don't have a business. They have an excuse to launder money between friends, right? And so if you need 5,000 people for you can make $100 a month, you have to look at, so here's when Curtis looks at a business, somebody comes up to me with a business opportunity. First thing I look at is not how much money I can make. So I've got somebody that will call me, oh, this has got a six by three matrix and blah, 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 blah. I don't care about all that stuff. That's just a money scheme to me. What I want to know is, does it the service have value? You know, would I buy it? Okay. Because if I wouldn't buy it, I damn sure can't sell it. Okay. And so, but if I will buy it and I think it's good, then I can transfer my excitement about it to you. So if you're not excited about it, don't do it just because you think they have a great compensation plan. Because in my opinion, if you're like me, you'll fail because I'm not, I'm not, a, you know, an ice cube that Eskimo, I can sell ice cubes to Eskimo. I hate people like that because those people are full of crap and they don't win, you know, and network marketing is not a sales business. It's a sponsor teach business. So you need to have some substance behind you to be successful you need to know how to attract people so you have to be an alpha as um what is my man oh uh, blah, blah, blah. mike dillard so look up mike dillard do a video look up i'll try to see i'm putting the show notes mike dillard he has a book called magnetic sponsoring it's like an e course out there on youtube somewhere and he talks about you have to be an alpha you need to be attractive you need to be able to bring value to people so as jim Rohn says success is something you attract by the person that you become Right. So if you're recruiting and you're trying to recruit a 10 and you're a four, you're not going to recruit them. You're not going to recruit me. You're brand new and you don't bring any value uh, to the equation. I know you can't help me. So if you say dumb stuff like, well, it's easy. Anybody can do it. Oh, it don't take a lot of time. People that are winning know you're full of crap because everything takes some time. There is no something for nothing because if it was something for nothing, everybody would be rich. So there is work involved. So just understand that from the get go. Right. And so what happens is you have to look at the business and say, well, look, does the business have value? Would I buy it? And see, one of the things I look for personally is I, I if you would draw a T and on the left side of the T, you put retail on the right side of the T, you put business development. So I, and I had a mentor tell me this a while ago and says, so I look at retail. So if you look at McDonald's, I call it U Inc. Right. So if you look at McDonald's, McDonald's has two sides of your business. They have retail, which is hamburgers, fries and shakes. So they market to the public. Retail. So they're selling people to come into the restaurant to buy stuff retail. They don't go in and they say, well, listen, <laughs> let's I want you to get your own McDonald's so you can get your stuff wholesale. Right. Which is how a lot of y'all recruit. And so, you know, if it's good, then let people buy it at full price. OK, you can have them sign up to your buyers club to sign up. But there's some things, you know, coffee or certain things you can use as fundraisers. So can you retail it? So one of the things that I was in, I was making 50, 60 with the with the my original company uh, retailing. Just you know, I had a product where I could make money just selling the product, you know? So I look at it, can I make money retailing? If I don't recruit anybody, can I make any money just retailing the product, all right? And then I wanna look at business development. It's like McDonald's. McDonald's has a sales phone, they recruit, they have opportunity means. If you ever watched the movie, The Founder, uh, Ray Kroc was all over the place at Shriners meeting, selling the business opportunity of McDonald's, what we call recruiting. And so he did that early on. You know, now, you know, if you go to franchise shows, these big conventions, they'll have tables up talking about the business opportunity of McDonald's, you know, what you got to do to qualify and, and, you know, the turnkey opportunity they're selling, which is a business model that works. OK, and that's kind of I call network marketing is an article that I, used to, I used to give out. It's called the people's franchise. Right. Which is, you know, for a couple hundred dollars, you've got a business system that works. Um, and really the, the, what I call the during unit. So it's in three business, three parts before, during, after, before is marketing, during is what you do. And after is follow up. The during unit works, but the before unit of how you attract those people is different. And they try to teach you one way. And I think that is the mistake. You got to have, you know, oh, you can't use the web, the web or this and that. It's not duplicable. So you have those, you know, 
replicated sites that you know it, you know Google ignores because you you can't do it that way. You got to develop your own list. I left the company one time in financial services and said, "Well, you know, I resigned." And said, "Well, these aren't our clients. These don't know. Those aren't your clients. They're our clients." And they wanted my files, my this and that. My, okay, but somebody had turned me on to ACT. Basically, back in the day, I had like ACT 2.0, but now I use like CRNs. But I realized the power of you need to own a list. So if I'm joining a business, I create some type of lead magnet where they join my list first because I realize I don't own the genealogy. They do. So I need to make them my asset. The asset is the database, okay? Because everything else, it's like you say, oh, I got all of my followers on, on, on Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram. That's not your asset, okay? Until you get them on your list and on your email list or your database there, that is Facebook's asset, okay? So you got to get traffic is what you're trying to generate. Traffic just means eyeballs on your stuff, but you have to get them into your database, all right? And uh, so you've got to be able to do both. So everybody that needs to come into your business development funnel, which is recruiting and training leaders, to develop outlets. Sometimes they're the same people. Most of the time they're not. OK. And uh, so you need to have a different funnels, a different conversation for each of those two groups. And you need to be able to do them both effectively. And if, but if you're really going to win, you got to focus on the leadership development. But you need to teach people to move product through that distribution network or you're not going to make any money. You're going to have a weak team. Okay. And so, so what do we talk about? Let me, let me take a breath. <laughs> okay. And so it is one of my favorite business models because you can do all this stuff for a few hundred dollars. You will invest in personal development and tools, but relatively speaking, that's nothing. You're going to invest in personal development. You're going to go to meetings. It's going to, it's going to take some time. But so let me give you a financial tip. And if you, you'll reach out to me, I will, I will, uh, uh, I'll, in the show notes, I'll put some articles on this stuff. But one of the strategies that we teach with network marketing is called income shifting. And so one of the things that you can do, you know, the tax code favors business people. I always tell people there's two tax codes, one for wage earners, one for business people, right? So according to the IRS, most people, I have a report, I'll see the report, uh, just email me at uh, kurtmay at gmail.com and say, can you send me the, the uh, uh, IRS report on filling out your withholding property? So if you're still working, one of the things that you could do that creates immediate money for you is, according to them, 70%, 75% of all people have their W-4 filled out incorrectly. So one of the things you could do is fill that out right. And give yourself a, a rate. It could be an extra hundred and fifty dollars a month. I've had it where it put an extra three to five hundred dollars a month back in somebody's paycheck, so that you can do what? Save more money, right? So that you can save money, pay yourself first, eliminate your non-preferred debt. When the debt is gone, you've increased cash flow. Because the goal of business is to become financially independent, not so you can go and buy cars and go on vacation. You know, you want to do that stuff, but you're trying to become financially independent. So adding a business to your game plan is not really optional. So you need to do this, whether it's, I don't care if it's uh, uh, e-commerce, drop shipping, Amazon drop shipping, you're consulting, you need a side hustle. That is part of the strategy. That's part of the strategy we teach people. We just help people find something that they like that they'll do and then show them how to actually be a business person about it. Um, because I do think it's one of the great business opportunities. So when you look at, you know, your number one wealth transfer, as we've said, is taxes, right? So how do you minimize your taxation? So you got to stop leaving Uncle Sam a tip, one. Two, you can engage in income shifting, which is you need to keep good records. You need to get a good uh, accountant, but you need to keep good records. So all of a sudden now you can, you know, they can get the home office deduction. You can write off you know, a percentage of the things that have to do with expenses you already got to use, the car you already got to drive, the cell phone you already got to use, trips that you can go on where you can begin to make those tax deductible. I'm not giving tax advice, but um, I will uh, send you some information on that. I'll probably have a tax expert on the show where we talk about that. But just, you know, uh, there's a book by Sandy Bachman called Lower Your Taxes Big Time, right? In the first chapter, of the book, it says, if you don't have a home-based business, you are brain dead. So can it get any more clear? So just having the business, not even making any money yet. Okay. I ain't talking about it. step two is earn business income. Step one is get 
your money back, you know, get control of your of your finances. And so he says, if you just having the business could save you two to eight thousand dollars a year in taxes, depending on your tax bracket and your income. Right. So if you so right now you can make money, you haven't even done anything yet. OK, just by by doing that. So now if you let's say you share with people what you just did, would that attract some people? So now if you're listening to you do network marketing, there's a tip. So get with me and I'll show you how to talk about that to your, to your people. I do trainings for I'm, you know, one of the things I'll try to do this. I want to be the financial advisor to a network marketing industry because um, I've, you know, I'll do local leaders that know kind of like my um, I'm documented, as they say, you know, so I've recruited uh, my last company just so you know who's talking to you um i in a three-year period we recruited we built a team that recruited over two thousand people and uh did over fifteen thousand memberships or sales product sales right so i know how to do this okay and so a lot of times about so i but i talk about how to make money but when i understand if i talk to you i've recruited more people and trained more people than most of the people listen to this call or most of the people in the room when i do these talks so you know i just that's not what i want to focus my time on right now but uh I have, and this is old school. This is not even interesting. This is like kneecap to kneecap doing pre PBRs, private business receptions and bring them to a meeting the old school way. All right. I would never do that. I would, I would never do that today. I, you know, I don't even do my financial that way. I'm also, our meetings are done through the web, you know, so you can't build a business like it's 1985, you know, it's 2018 as I record this, right? So you got to learn how to, to integrate technology but remember, because if you spend all this time recruiting people, what's going through their mind is, can I do what he's doing? Do I have time to do what he's doing? And do I want to do to him, to my friends, what he did to me? And so if that all three is not yeses, they may buy your product, but they're not going to join you. Okay? And you're unknowingly turning them off and you don't even know how to do it. But you've got to learn how to promote. You've got to learn how to attract. You've got to learn how to use uh, marketing, um, you know, magnetic sponsor and all uh, Mike Dillard did was take the uh, Dan Kennedy has a course called magnetic marketing and he read that and he translated that into network marketing. So if you um, look at uh, the no BS guide to sales success or any Dan Kennedy stuff, you'll start understanding that whole concept of being a welcome guest as opposed to annoying pest. There's a whole methodology of how to make yourself a welcome guest. You need to learn that. And learn how to create value or how to put out information that people are interested in to uh, bring them to you. OK. And so you've got to learn how to be a marketer. One of the things I tell when I speak to business owners is that you are in the marketing business. All right. Uh, I'm going to end with this uh, or let me give you one or one or two other points. So you got to know the numbers. It's a numbers business. Most people don't know their numbers. So when I left the company I did to do this, the, the, the company I just told you about uh, marketing legal services, one of the things I did by that time, I was told that, listen, you've got to understand the numbers of the business. And I didn't understand the numbers. And the numbers were, you know, like when they tell you three who get three who get three, I'll test people. and I'll say, well, does that work? And the it does work, but it doesn't work like that. You know, so what happens is if you if the way I looked at the business, and the way I did, listen, if I got three people. Then for every three people that you sponsor, one's going to go fast, one's going to go slow, one's going to quit. And that's just you can't do anything about that. Right. So you can't. Oh, I'm going to get the great people. You know, you get you only way to get quality is to get quantity. Right. But you don't just throw, you know, crap against the wall and see what sticks and what don't. You need to recruit. You need to have a screening mechanism. You need to re recruit large quantities of quality people, people that, you know, are solid financially. You know, that have good character, that understand hard work. And then you got to recruit those type people. I'll recruit kids every now and then just out of college. But most times, um, unless they come from entrepreneurial parents, they're not even worth anything till about 27, 28. <laughs> Honestly, because they don't, you need to have been passed over per promotion. You need to have, you know, hit the ceiling and, you know, you have been beat up a couple of times to where you're open 
to that that dream doesn't work right <laughs> or it doesn't work like that and now you got to be open you got to have the frustration level to be open for something else so that's another recruiting number right recruiting um uh, idea for you guys okay and so who are you looking for but so, so when i knew that for every three you know so when i when i joined this company my first 35 days i had a database of 1300 people another tip i recruited personally uh, 15 people in the first 35 days. And out of that, I found I had one person go really fast and he was responsible for about 1,200 people and in my team over for over about three year period, 11, 1,200 people. And he grew on to, you know, grew a team of about four or 5,000. But I'm just talking about in that initial period where I was hardcore and um, what we're and I had one person go semi fast and I had a person quit, you know, and so probably over a three year period, I personally recruited about 60 people. And um, but most of that came out of that first. Wave, OK, and so you don't understand the business, so you'll hear well, so and so just joined and they made all this money. See, the inside baseball <laughs> hate to blush your bubble is that they left another company and they brought all their leaders with them. Uh, people don't understand that a lot of times these companies will give these people signing bonuses to leave the other company to join that company. So folks, I know the inside baseball, how this stuff works. So when I talk to somebody, I respect people. When I left my other company, I started from scratch. I was, I left my team. I said, listen, I'm, I'm in, it was a financial services MLM, right? And I I told my team, I said, listen, I'm, this is a business decision I've made. You're going to roll up to my upline. You're going to be in her base shop, we called it. And uh, this is, I didn't, I didn't ask anyone to come with me. And I started from scratch with a list. Hi, I got something you need to see. You may or may not be interested. You got about 15 minutes. And I just sat down today at a flip chart. Now I would, just invite them onto a Zoom call or something, or uh, and or send them a video I recorded. I wouldn't do any of that stuff now, but I would, you know, still one at a time answering the questions. Hey, are you in? Do you, are you are you interested in or out? And then I would bring. Then I would invite them to if if you're doing you're listening, you're doing local meetings. I didn't bring anybody to a meeting that already hadn't seen something. So because the meeting is to reinforce and show the bigness bigness of. And so what's going on at the meeting is social proof. Right. So these are little tips. I could <laughs> I could do a whole training on this. But, you know, the thing is, you want to be able to evaluate a good business. Does it have legs? Is it does it create value in the marketplace? Do you feel good about it? So that's the first thing we're evaluating a business. I want to know, does it have value? Then I want to know, would I buy it? Is it good for the, my potential customer or client? And thirdly, can I make money marketing the, the service? And so that is number three. And so a lot of people are looking for number one because they're trying to same thing when people go to these real estate workshops, you're trying to make a quantum leap to to jump over all of the past mistakes you've made with money. You're thinking that this is your salvation and people think, oh, I've got this business and and they think, well, um, this is going to you know take me to glory. It's not because you don't understand what you're doing yet. You don't know how to make money. So it always makes me nervous when people put their new business as part of their financial plan. It is not. It still takes and one of the things that saved me is I heard from a time I was seven or eight. My dad used to tell me, and I don't know, we got into this conversation one time I was in, a, we were going to a cash and carry. So I would see these little corner stores open up and close up. I was about eight. We just got our supermarket. And um, so I would go with them to pick up the supplies. I said, well, dad, why do these stores keep opening and closing? He says, well, most people just have enough money to go into business, but they don't have enough money to sustain themselves. It takes three to five years to build a business. So one of the things I tell you to do is once you evaluate and pick a good business, we used to tell people, look, be here a year from now, do the work, go to the meetings, focus on building your database, focus on personal development and be here a year from now. So even if you're not setting the world on fire with income, the tax breaks should help you be in business. And then eventually when you're worth it, you'll start to make money. You know, people have said, you know, neuro marketing is a personal development program with a high compensation program on the back end. In other words, you won't make a hundred thousand or 50,000 or 200,000 until you're worth it. And right now, if you're not making money, that's because you're not worth it. You don't know how to do it. You're not a leader. Nobody will follow you. You don't know how to sell. You don't know how to recruit. You don't know how to field train. And so you have to learn how to do that. Now, if you don't want to do that, then guess what? You probably shouldn't do network marketing. You should learn how to do 
you know, I have people that uh, I know they're not, they don't know people. So they should learn how to do e-commerce where they can, you know, get, do Amazon drop shipping or something uh, or, or both. They're not mutually exclusive. You should do all of that. Or, you know, listen to the Carrie Buck interview where she talks about the ATM investing. I You, you know, all of that, see business, you're go, you need to be in business because you need to make more money than you can with a job. And so all of the tax breaks that we'll get into another episode that I talked about uh, still work. So with Carrie's business, with the ATM blueprint, you know, the, the work is not because somebody called me. Well, does it does, you know, they're like, well, does that work? <laughs> I was like, what have you ever gone to an ATM machine? What the hell kind of question is that? Of course it works. That's not the work. The work is you need to learn how, if you go through her course, how to find out, you know, the questions, how to get agreement signed, how to find in source locations. And so what do you do with that? You get the location locked down, contracted, then you go buy the machine. Okay. And then you get installed. I mean, so you got the work is, so it's still networking, getting out there, letting people know what you do. And, you know, so it doesn't matter the business. So network marketing, you can get start for very little money, but the work is the same. Okay. And so there's no, everybody's jumping from company to company looking for the a greener grass, but it's still work. Okay. And anybody that tells you that is full of, of crap. Okay. It's easy work, easy, hard work. I mean, it's going to be hard work, but you know, it's not like you're out busting bricks. I mean, you talk to people for a living. So, I mean, how hard can that be? And, um, and you're hanging out with your friends, you're developing relationships. So uh, for me, that's hard actually, you know, because I'm, my patience is short <laughs> and, uh, you know, my leadership style is listen, I'm like the Marine Corps. I'm not a Marine. So, and I re totally respect them. I was like, but that one of the things they say, I never promised you a rose garden. So to me, you're not tough enough. If you're not intense, I probably am not your leader because I don't want to hear your excuses. You're whining, you know, suck it up and get your ass to work basically is my leadership style. And so <laughs> not quite that mean, but sort of, because what I want to do is I want to find out what you want to do. And I am going to beat you over the head with your goals. OK, not my goals because you're not working for me because I already told you I will make money whether you make money or not. OK, because I work, you know, nobody has to get me. I don't need to be motivated to work. And so if you don't have an internal drive that internally is driving you to be somebody to to win, to, you know, you, you know, you're 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 you always have that turning in your stomach. Uh, if you don't have that. I, you need to keep your job because I don't think that you can win without that I don't, money in and of itself. I think you, I need a crusade. I need to be involved in something bigger than my business. So with us is the prosperity economics movement. And I want to help uh, 1 million families become economically independent. See, that's a crusade that excites me. OK, and so I can drive that towards network markets. I want to help y'all become economically independent because you think it's the business. And it might be, but you can, you know, if you never make more than $2,000 a month part time or $1,000 a month part time or five to $800 a month part time, you can still become financially independent in five to eight years just doing that with with good a good plan. And um, that's that's kind of and because see, here's the thing. Most of y'all ain't going to make ten, twenty thousand dollars a month, but you can make an extra three hundred dollars a month, five hundred dollars a month, thousand dollars a month. And if you're doing that, I can show you how to part use that little bit of extra money and the tax breaks and you know how to talk about that i can help you build economically independence in a decade or less and that's what you want to be able to do and so if you start doing that guess what you'll attract more people and then you will speed that process up because the fruit will be on your tree you don't need fancy cars and stuff what you want is impressive financial statements you know could you while you're building your side business buy a a, a, a turnkey property or a property a year and you're building your passive income you know if you're a leader and you're listening to this you think you're trying to attract people with your house the goal in network marketing is you need to get your money up to where you at least make two or three hundred thousand dollars a year so you can be an accredited investor so you can really get into some good stuff there are things that i could share with people i can't even talk to you about by law because you don't make enough money and so you know this is a way to do that so there's so many other reasons other than you chasing the money that the uh that the business is good for you jim Rohn says listen don't may set a goal to become a millionaire not for the money but because of what it will make of you in the process of becoming that. 
Okay. And that's the power. And so that is the power of uh, network marketing. And so folks, this falls under get money, the get money part of the money for life equation, get money, bank it, borrow it, spend it, repay it. Because guess what? If I get you getting more money, you got more money to bank. And that's where I want to help you do, right? Bank it, borrow it, spend it, repay it. And so we're going to teach you how to get more money coming into your personal economy. So folks with that, I went way longer than I expected to, but hopefully this was a little bit value. <laughs> and uh, hey, thank you for listening to the Practical Wealth Show. Remember, uh, I'm going to put some of these things I mentioned in the show notes. And if you've got a question, uh, you can uh, reach out. You can shoot me an email to kurtmay at gmail.com. Uh, you can go to our site. And uh, if you want to know uh, you know why traditional planning doesn't work, you can go to our site and download Kim Butler's uh, ebook, Financial Planning Has Failed. And uh, we'd love to have a conversation with you when you're ready. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to Practical Wealth. To access the show notes and resources, go to practicalwealthshow.com. To get your questions on the show, go to practicalwealthshow.com. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before you make any investment decisions, consult a professional. This show was copyrighted by Practical Wealth. Written permission must be granted before syndication or rebroadcasting.